Okay, don't mind all the festivity. Jesus was born a long time ago, so they're going crazy playing music, and uh, there's going to be a lot of booms, fireworks going off. I am calling... I don't know who I'm calling. I don't know how I'm supposed to refer to him. Let me ask him. Hey, I thought I had your number, so I called whatever person I have registered with your number on my uh, contacts, and he didn't know me, so I don't know why I have his number. But I just. I might have changed my number. Oh, okay. Well. I think uh, I changed it about a month ago. Was that? I think I changed it about a month ago. Oh, okay. Well, the new person just got a call from me all late as hell. Um, what time is it there? One one thirty. Yep, one twenty-five. All right, and you didn't get my last message. I said, "How do you want me to refer to you? Like by your first name, or I don't remember your, which is your YouTube name." I've asked you that like ten times since I talked to you. Yeah, you can call me Mike. Okay, Mike. Um, well, the video's on, so let me start saying stuff towards the video. And like I said, um, you can jump in at any point, or you can just wait until I, I ask you some particular stuff about the things you brought up. For one thing, I would like to say that I am so different than the popular culture, whereas the the thing that they feel comfortable mocking and scorning is a southern person. So you'll hear them using a southern accent as anything from hate-filled to racist to whatever. But my family's from the south, and so when I hear a southern accent, it's a delightful thing. Oh, let me get my, my costume on, my Know Your Enemy costume. So, you're talking about this difficult time in life, and one of the things you mentioned is that you're not living up to, to expectations, and then you talked about stoicism, and you said that stoicism is, let me see. One who's suffering without complaining. Yeah, suffering without complaining. We have a similar thing, uh, that's not what stoicism is. We have a similar mindset in, in the culture in general. That, that is uh, popular, and that's, a, and that's a popular interpretation, popular wrong interpretation of, of Stoicism. We have the idea that the strong, silent type, that's Stoic, you know, Stoic, strong and silent. Right. When really, right. the reality is, and you got plenty of kids, so you're going to be able to teach them this lesson, that there are two kinds of people, strong and silent. One of the reasons that men commit suicide far more often, and I'm sure you've heard me talk on that, is because right. they pent themselves up. People tell them you're stronger because you're silent. Then eventually if you try to actually express yourself, that's seen as a weakness and so you bottle it up and kill yourself. So let's make a hierarchy of things that are weak. Uh, things that are weak, number one, is, is killing yourself. And plenty of people do that out of, out of weakness or frustration or, or life can't get much worse than this. Schopenhauer, famous philosopher, would tell you that when the fear of a pain of death or the possibility of death, when that pain is outweighed by the pain of life, you will kill yourself. So that's weak. Not expressing yourself is weak. Bending to the social norm of be strong in the exactly twisted and, and squished way we tell you to be, that's strength. Now that's obedience. So, that, so just to clear it up, there's nothing strong about not expressing yourself and stoicism is not suffering without complaint. Stoicism is well explained by the Rudyard Kipling poem, If. Have you ever heard this poem? Right. No, no. Well, my uh, that would be like the, uh, my other definition of it would be like not being affected by your passion or your feelings, you know, like holding it in. Okay. You know, trying to think logically and rationally instead of acting out in your emotions. Well, thinking logically and rationally is exactly right. 
but there's nothing logical or rational about ignoring your emotions or ignoring your past. So you have a totally, that thing doesn't fit. If you want to be logical and rational, you have to consider your feelings. You have to consider your past. Everyone else is going to consider your past and their own past. There's nothing at all logical about trying to downplay your past or think you're too, you try to pretend like you're too strong to acknowledge it. Stoicism is, is more usefully defined as properly contextualizing positive and negative. Simply put, you are not, if, if people are cheering for you, you're not overwhelmed with happiness. And if people are hating whatever you do or say, you're not overwhelmed with shame. It's not being lukewarm either. It's not just being unaffected. Plenty of people think it might be that. It is taking the good, taking the bad, but also being active in how you interpret it. Another way of thinking of it is that you are not a thermometer, someone who just measures the temperature of the room and then goes with that. Oh, what do people want to hear? What do they want from me? You're a thermostat. You can set yourself. You can change the way you take something or the way people are giving you something, an active agent and all that. But the Rudyard Pip Kipling poem, if some of the stanzas from it, some of the lines from it are, if you can keep your head when everyone around you is blaming, their, is losing theirs and blaming it on you, when you can trust yourself when everyone doubts you, but make allowances for their doubting too, and there's a whole lot of other things, but it's, if you can bear to hear the truths you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or see the things you've given your life to broken, and stoop and pick them up and start again with worn out tools. If you can walk with kings, and I'm going to paraphrase here, I don't remember exactly. If you can walk with kings, but keep your virtue. No, if you can walk with crowds, but keep your virtue, and walk with kings, but not lose your common touch. If neither friends nor foes can hurt you, if all people's opinions count with you, but none too much. And that's the important right. thing. The, the, the poem I recommend looking at it, I, I take out the gender specific phrasing of it because I find it useless. But it talks all about, right. uh, you know, the popular thing is the idea that don't care what people think, just do your own thing and stay strong and true to yourself. Well, you shouldn't let it bowl you over. Just because people are complimenting you doesn't make you right. And just because people are, are calling for your head doesn't make you wrong. And there's nothing at all good necessarily about stubbornly sticking to your own way. And that's what I wanted to address first of all about your, your misled idea of stoicism. I told you the title of the video was going to be Consistency Over Intensity, Patience as the Foundation of Stoicism, Powerlifting and Surfing. And really, I just choose the titles, just so you know, I choose titles so that I'm sure to cover everything. I can glance at the title and say, okay, I wanted to talk about Stoicism, which we just did somewhat, but I'll talk a little bit more about some of my favorite Stoics and what they had to say. I'm going to explain powerlifting, which a lot of people have wanted me to do. And I'm going to explain surfing because it's very useful for the concept of consistency over intensity. And if you're not getting where you want to be as it relates to applying stoicism or staying true to yourself in all this it might be because you're setting unrealistic expectations that you can't necessarily meet partially because i don't know how you were raised but most of us were raised on on movies and whatnot to believe that all you need to do is just push things in the fourth quarter or push things on fourth down and just pull it out in the end and win but really it's consistency not intensity that gets you there. Consistency right. of the of, of exercise, of, of anything, that's what gets you there. You are your habits. So as it relates to powerlifting, one of the things I mentioned that got me up to lifting, as I've mentioned before, seven plates on each side of a bench is not being intense, not acting crazy or, or acting like, I'm just going to do this. A lot of patience. And you don't get that strong by assuming you have to at least lift three plates or even two. You start where you are. You could be in the gym, if you came off an injury, you could be in the gym and see women, heaven forbid, lifting heavier than you. That doesn't mean you're supposed to lift heavier and then just take yourself from where you're not to where you want to be. You've got to take yourself from where you are to where you want to be. So when it comes to something like stoicism, if you want to be 
more so unaffected by the positive and the negative and more so self-controlled, it doesn't help to pretend and say, well, I have to be at least as self-controlled as, you know, my uncle who is this way or my sister who is this way or women in general, anything like that. You got to be realistic as hell about where you are. That's the only thing that's going to get you where you want to be is if you start in an accurate location. Another example of this is when you watch men stretching anywhere, the gym, a karate class, a yoga class, anywhere, you'll see men trying to force flexibility, force themselves to loosen up and relax. But you can't. You have to relax and lengthen the muscles and take yourself from where you really are. If your body is only so flexible, you can't just force it to be more flexible than it is. One more example of being patient and being consistent over intense. <clears throat> it's been years ago now, but I took up surfing because my brother surfs and he showed me. Uh, actually, my one of my best friends showed me, the same guy that taught me guitar. Uh, he and my brothers, my brother showed me how to surf. And I was strong as hell. This was almost nine years ago and I was strong as hell back then. Nevertheless, I got tired out by trying to swim out, just to swim out. Because when the waves came and I went on a big wave day, they would just knock me and I'd be swimming through them and they'd knock me and then eventually I'd just get so tired. Well, for one thing, of course, there's different kinds of strength. There's, you know, burst strength and there's endurance, blah, blah, blah. But the fact is consistency wins over intensity and you need technique. What I was supposed to be doing is going under the waves, over the waves, or simply when the waves hit me, just relax, let the waves knock me back if they would and then start going once the resistance has subsided. But I didn't know that and I wore myself clean out because I was trying to do the intense thing. I, I mean, I was just really thinking, oh, I'm strong enough. I was doing handstand push-ups at that time. I was into gymnastics and doing handstand push-ups. So I thought, oh, I just battle right through this. Much like uh, you might be thinking, well, I'm, I'm from this background or I'm this demographic, therefore I should be at least this stoic. I got kids now. I got to be at least this stoic. I got to set a good example of not being affected by stuff. But all that does is, is sets up this idea of the strong silent type and sets a bad example for everyone around you. Uh, I think that's all I had so far. That's, that's all I had sort of planned. Although, um, if you want to touch on something about that, feel free. Otherwise, I was going to address when you said that most of your suffering was caused by women. So do you want to address anything that I just mentioned or, or you want to go right on to that? Well, pro pro probably, uh, yeah, I'll just say one little bit on it, but um, m most of mine has to do with my uh, interpretation on the Stoic. I've not like uh, studied on it deeply, mm -hmm. but I have read the meditations of uh, Marcus Aurelius, yeah. and uh, that's my only example uh, of a stoic. But probably it's, I mean, to link it to my to my experience in my life as a man here in the United States of America would be uh, um, not not wanting to um, to show my emotion. It's it's portrayed by men to be a weak thing, to be a uh, um, or it's looked at by society to be weak or uh, frowned upon, looked down upon, um, to, to be an emotional person, you know what I mean? That, uh, maybe not the emotion of anger, but any other emotion like, you know, sadness or, uh, uh, over maybe happiness. I can't think of all the emotions, but, uh, yeah, no, I get you. So, so I found that being quiet and being strong, now that, that got looked upon as, well, I must be smart or I must be, uh, you know, a tough character. So I so I adapted that that type of uh, uh, mentality, but it didn't really help me out in life a lot. I mm. mean, I didn't feel fully, uh, you know, like I was missing something in life, you know. And then when you know I'd let my emotions out, I'd always be scolded or look, you know what I mean, just not treated as well as when I tried to hold the stoic or what was perceived to be a stoic the attitude, you know. Yeah. Well, so, for, well, for one thing, because just to be clear, and then and then continue with what you're saying, but. To be clear, once you once you set a certain relationship with people, it's like a partnership. It's like, hey, I act this way, you act this way. This is how we interact. Then, if you just randomly change that, you know, if you say, oh, I'm going to be the strong, silent type, and then you change it, 
then they think, I mean, of course, you can update your relationships with people at any point and say, okay, well, this was the old contract. We need to make a new contract. I'm going to have emotions now. But people will resent that. They're like, hey, you're supposed to be this frame of reference for me, Michael, and I need you to, to be this thing. You know, back in school when you would change anything about you, they're like, what, are you trying to change now? Are you trying to change? You, you have a new, you're trying to do this new haircut, new style thing? People want you as their frame of reference to keep their life comfortable. But, uh, and there's more to say about your, your interpretation. Actually, let me, let me blast through it. Or, or did you need to finish up something you were just saying? Well, uh, yeah, I'll have one last little thing, man. Sure. And, uh, like you're saying, in, in school, you know, back in school, but the funny thing is I thought things would change as I got older. You know, I'm 34 now, and I go to work, you know, and there's, you know, a few hundred guys at where I work, and it's still basically the same childish mentality and attitude. So I find that using that same mentality and attitude actually works in that environment. <laughs> yeah, well, things don't change, yeah. Things don't just change because of arbitrary time flying. I mean, time, of course, is just a made-up construct. Uh, we're in the present. That's fine. I, I, I find myself, you know, I find myself changing my attitude and my behavior according to the uh, people I'm around, the, the associates that I'm around, you know, whether it be at work, you know, it's, it's hard to be yourself, you know. That's a safer bet, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Go ahead, man, I'm done on that part. Okay, I was just saying that's a safer bet to, to not be yourself, but yeah, it's not a very uh, fulfilling thing. Now, as to the Marcus Aurelius, that's a great example. But I recommend um, that you read it because you've never actually read it. I haven't read it in about five or six years. Exactly. And, and uh, read Heraclitus also. A guy named Heraclitus wrote uh, a bunch of stuff and it's in fragments now. He's the guy that we get the, the old adage, you can never step in the same river twice because you change and so does the river. So the way I'll apply it to you is I'll say you have never read Marcus Aurelius. Some other guy did right, five right. years ago, and it was different. So yeah, I, I recommend not only read that, was that? I figured that's what you were saying, I understood it. Okay, so yeah, read that for one thing, but also read um, Seneca on the shortness of life. And also read Plutarch on listening. And if you forget these, uh, I mean, I guess you can look back at the video, but I can send you links to these. They're available online. Plutarch's on listening and Seneca's uh, on the shortness of life. These are two useful things. Uh, Plutarch wasn't a Stoic, but not important. Now, as to your interpretation, again, of Stoicism, people say, you, you described it as, as people look at it as strong to not express yourself, blah, 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 strong and silent, right? People right. are not Stoic. If your goal is to be a Stoic, then it doesn't matter what people think. They're either wrong or right. How many people can be wrong? All of them can be wrong. Every single person in Nazi Germany was, by default, a Nazi German, because that was the thing. Everyone in England back in the day was part of the Church of England, because you had to be. So just because people are saying something, that doesn't make it true at all. So as a Stoic, if you really are interested in it, it doesn't matter that they say Stoicism is to be strong and silent. There are only two types, strong and silent, and regardless whether you're a Stoic or not. So you can't bend to that social pressure. To do so is, well, you can do it, but to do so is decidedly not Stoic. It's not Stoic to say, what shame would be attached to expressing myself and what benefit would be attached to hiding myself and be presumed better than I am or smarter than I am, etc. To do that is, is, is to be a sniveling coward that never you'll meet your full potential whatsoever. And probably that's the goal. One of the things my, my dad used to tell me and, and just people in general, he say growing up, it's better to be thought of, it is better to remain silent and be thought a fool. Do you know this one? Hello? Hello? Do, do you know the rest of that one? It's like the phone cut out there for about right when you said what you're, uh, the meat of what you're trying to say. Oh, okay. Well, it's better to be, it's better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. 
as in it's better to right, be right right so you heard that i've heard that saying before i've also heard it said like um well the, the less you say the, the, the less likely people are to, are to know how ignorant you are right <laughs> and so that's that's one of the things i grew up with too and eventually we have to unlearn this kind of horse shit and let me explain a right. way better phrase see my dad always said that it's better to remain silent and be thought a fool then open your mouth and remove all doubt you know all doubt that you're a fool yeah you're a fool here's a better one as far as i know i made it up but it's not important it is a wise person is foolish for a very short time because they don't know something they open their mouth they get the feedback they learn they move on a foolish person is foolish for a long time because they seek to hide their ignorance seem like they know and i'll just cut it right there that's the kind of people who are in the middle of a classroom. I've been in plenty of classrooms where a teacher is saying something, no one gets it, and then one person, if I'm in the class, it's me, says, oh, I didn't catch any of that, I don't get that. And everyone breathes a sigh of relief. Oh, God, I didn't get it either, but I wasn't going to say anything. I was just going to sit and, and remain silent and possibly be thought a fool. So that cowardice also. I was taught the same thing by, by my dad. I don't know where you learned it, but... This, the less you say, the less you can be blamed for. I mean, again, if your goal really is stoicism, and I recommend it as a goal, you can't be concerned with looking stupid. What is stupid is to end up 30, 40, 50 years old and have the same mentality as high school, which I agree with you. Plenty of people do. You get out into the work, you think, oh, I thought things were just going to magically change. They don't. You actually have to progress. Old people are simply people that haven't died. So to develop yourself and develop your character... There's nothing embarrassing at all about being wrong, but there's plenty embarrassing about hiding away your ignorance out of the shame that you might be shown wrong. You want to be shown wrong, and you want to thank people for showing you that you're wrong. And of course people are going to use that and say, you didn't even know that? Oh man, I know that. But what I recommend you do, if anybody ever chastises you or anyone when you're around, saying like, you didn't know such and such, remind them that they didn't even know their name before they were told it. We don't know any of these things. And right. plenty of people will use that as a status symbol, like, know the difference between there, there, and there. Uh, you should at least know that Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president. All this random shit that nobody knows un unless they're told. So don't ever think you have to, again, that's, that's about being where you are, starting where you are. As I mentioned with the, the weightlifting example and the stretching example, you have to, if you don't know something, just, no, actually, I don't know that. You're 34 and you don't know that? Yeah, I'm 34 and I don't know that. There you go. And then it'll become easier and easier to just, yeah, okay. Uh, I can, and you can develop your own fun talking points. Say, okay, I can see you're emotionally invested. This is your time to shine. Disrespect me because I don't know something you know, because you have so little self-respect that you can't imagine knowing something that somebody else doesn't know. And this is your time to shine. But yes, please inform me. What is, you know, whatever you don't know. Be glad to be have your ignorance removed from you so there's no reason at all to be worried of looking bad so feel free to talk but still unless you have something to say on that I want to hear this about uh, your suffering is mostly from women all I was gonna say I'm gonna get into it eventually and we can still talk about anything you might bring up on that topic but I was gonna say um, there's a couple of ways to say it Eleanor Roosevelt said no one can offend you without your consent I would tell you that it's not the cards you're dealt, it's how you play them. People can't be the main cause of your suffering. There are kids who, whose mothers put them in microwaves. There are, right. there are uh, men and women who torture other men and women. People have been through worse. People have received worse from other people. It's not enough to say someone else caused such and such because that's the past. The best you can do is, live from, is, is learn from the past, but you can't live in the past. You can waste the present trying to live in the past, but it can't happen. It's just you wasting the present. The past is gone. You can certainly learn from it. But of course, you talk in this, this uh, idea of, of, of ignoring the past and just being strong enough to ignore it. That's nonsense. Again, that's not strong at all. That's... Um, that's weakness. Really, it is. It's, it's simply weakness to, to close yourself off. And it's not like you're an asshole because you're weak. You know, people are weak. Just don't mistake it for a strength to shut off the past. You can learn from it. 
and you can look towards the future for judging about how you know how you might should navigate but you got to live in the present you can only live in the present so you're just wasting the the present if you really are so fixated on the past and so fixated on women had the cards or anyone's you're just saying women have these cards as in they're the ones that played these things wrong they're they're the cause of your suffering because they played the cards they had wrong but of course that's impossible the cause of your suffering would be your reactions your responses and your the way you do things because it's right. it's very unlikely that you were trapped up it's very unlikely that you were trapped up like a misery you ever seen that movie where the where yeah. the lady chains the guy yeah. to the bed it's very unlikely that that's what you're talking huh Stephen King yeah so it's yeah. very it's very unlikely that that's what you're talking about you're like no women are the cause of my my uh, most of my problems and suffering because they chained me to a bed for the last 34 years and mm, probably not so barring just outright being trapped and caged probably they're not the cause of of they're not the 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 useful even if they were imagine they, they are the cause of your suffering it's still not useful for you to give them all your cards how could you do things differently to get what you want in our culture that's not very popular it's not very popular to say okay how can i affect the situation because then it's like blaming the victim no they're there it's their fault so therefore i'm you know, that's that moral superiority card and you see how miserable it makes women to play that card constantly all they have to fall back on is this someone else is to blame for my misery that just doesn't turn you into the kind of person you want to be which is someone who can go out and and grab a hold of the life you want to live and do it well i would but you see women are doing such and such they're playing their cards wrong so i don't have to sit back passively and just hope they play their cards better i don't recommend that and it's certainly not stoic <laughs> you're right man uh, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, there's not a whole lot I can say about, um, maybe, maybe, uh, that's why I need to talk to you about some things, I and mean, it's hard for me to, to get all of my point across to you. I don't exactly mean, um, misery as in, like, I'm completely miserable right now, like a totally destroyed person that's, you know, just so, you know, like the true definition of misery. <clears throat> I mean, I have happiness and good things in my life, but... Uh, maybe when I look back and think about the things, the times that I was uh, miserable or, or unhappy or just things were just shitty, and I pinpoint it back to experiences with women. Mm -hmm. You know, um, children, uh, not not my children, but I mean my dealings with the women mm -hmm. about the children. Um, so, I mean, the only thing I can ever think of is like, uh, if I say, for instance, I've often thought like this. Um, say, if I'd have been um, castrated, yeah. all cut off, turned into a eunuch mm -hmm. early in life, I don't think I'd have had hardly any miseries at all. I, I mean, I probably would have maybe still somewhat of a desire for women, but I imagine the desire mostly probably would have went away. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that the misery would have went away. And um, and I and I link it a lot to a lot of the things you talk about in your videos about how our society treats men and how our, our boys and then girls and you know they uh, grow up to become men and women and I mean I've just I identify a lot with those videos that you make. I get you, and but I know but it's true. I get you, but you're talking about. Um being a eunuch you wouldn't have felt the suffering and all this kind of stuff the the attraction to women you know setting yourself up for failure by trusting them by wanting them all that kind of stuff i'm assuming exactly but check this out exactly i'm not saying i want to cut my balls off i'm not saying that that would suck no i know I'm what you're talking about you, it would have happened. yeah but you're saying you're saying that the that the kind of like the buddhists say it's it's the unmet hope that is that is the cause of of the frustration it's it's the it's the wanting something you can never have uh Nine Inch Nails has a song, Something I Can Never Have. You should take a look at that. But Okay, even things like this, like talking on a, like deep subjects like I am with you right now. Mm -hmm. I've even thought like that. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, I'm not a uh, simple-minded. I mean, I'm not saying I'm real smart, but I'm not the most simple-minded. You know, I want to talk, you know, you have a partner, you're in a relationship with somebody. At some point, even if you start out, like most of the women I chose, it was on looks, you know, what they look like. Mm -hmm. At some point in the relationship with each woman that I've been with, I started realizing, hey, there's more, there's more to life than looks. I need to talk to this person. So once you start talking to them and you realize, man, when it comes to talking on any subject that's important, any deep conversation, anything that's meaningful in life, 
none of the women that I've chose, I can't get anywhere with them. It's like everything's so menial and, and, and uh, you know, materialistic and uh, what can I do for them? You know, those kind of things. And yeah, that's what I mean, but that's that. But but again, see, let's tie that back into the idea that that um that women are causing the suffering or even are, I mean, simply, you set up these contracts. You tell the woman right. you you are okay as you are, and so there's no there's not even an inch of room for you to blame them for what you set up for. I mean, if we had shotgun weddings like we used to have, if you were if you were um, right. betrothed to somebody as a child, then okay. But now you, you set yourself up for failure, and you, of course you set them up for failure too. But um, the thing to, to remember is not, is this, does this seem like my ideal person when you come across somebody, but just look at yourself and say, am I the ideal person of my ideal person? What do you have to offer them? I mean, and, and don't answer that, I mean, just, just saying, what do you have to offer your ideal person? If you met them right now, are you even remotely ready to be the ideal person of your ideal person? That really makes you right, not want right. to waste time and not want to blame anyone and just say, okay, other people played their cards wrong. These women weren't good at conversation that I want, all this kind of stuff. And plus, you know, I, I saw them as a status symbol. I feel better about myself for getting the more attractive woman. And plus, I like stupid women because it makes me feel smarter by comparison. All that poisonous nonsense that you're taught, you're setting them up for failure too. And yourself, of course. But your ideal woman would right. never want to be around the you that you are when you tolerate this kind of nonsense, facilitate it, encourage it, bring it out of people. Lest we forget, you and I have been talking for about 30 minutes and we can have an effect on each other in just 30 minutes. But if you meet a woman and you say, okay, she's attractive enough to where I don't care what I have to say, what I have to tolerate, or how little of an effect I have to have on her, I want her for these things, whatever they are, a, a social ornament, uh, reinforcement of my own masculinity, sex, all that stuff, that's your priority, which is fine, but here's the fun part, and here's the part that is, should be really relieving. You got what you asked for. So all you got to do is ask for something differently. I recommend you hit up a burn ward. You go somewhere where people have been through something that your priorities as you are now, you could never appreciate them physically. Date somebody or engage somebody and just really see the kind of the kind of improvement you can make on them and improvement on yourself by having good priorities for that person. Even this kind of stuff like we're doing here, just conversation, don't even necessarily have, have to be a woman. But remember, as soon as you start looking for a date or a mate, I mean, you're married, but when you the next time you you uh, deal with your wife what is she is she an ornament is she a sex object is she something just to reinforce your mascul masculinity is it um something that you just can't take back so you got to make the best of it a shitty conversational partner how would you define her and recognize you get in exactly what you ask for and so what plenty of people will do is passive aggressively start blaming the other person. You say, oh, well, she doesn't this or she doesn't that. Or I know I, I messed up in the past, but you know, now I should just be able to change as, as sudden and as, and as fiercely as I want. That's just passive aggression. You're just moving from passively doing what you don't really want, but what works, moving to aggression of, you know what, I'm going to change all these things. And if you're not with me, you're against me and I'm going to cut you off like dead weight. That's the same shit women do. And that's a mentality that rots them to the core. So just keep that in mind. When you deal with her, you need to be real realistic to her about how you set up a contract. You, I mean, I don't even know if it's specific to your relationship, if that's the, the problem that we were talking about. But if there's any problem, you need to be real humble about the fact that you were no less than half of the contract. Uh, you, you drew up no less than half the contract. On my face, I don't know. You probably saw my, my tattoo video. It's gone now. Um, but one yeah, side, okay. yeah. So one side is them? yeah. The one side is is courage. The other side is humility. Yeah. You know, at some point, you got to have the courage to be like, you know what? This this um. This contract we wrote. This is bullshit. No, I'm out of here. You know, I'm I'm out of this contract. I'm not out of the relationship. I'm out of this contract. But then you got to humbly 
recognize, okay, courage isn't enough. Just, just throwing your hands up and saying, all right, now I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be a real stoic. I'm not going to put up with your nonsense. That's not fair. You got to let somebody down slow and gradually and, and very full, fully and not letting her down as in like divorce or anything like that. Certainly not suicide, for example. But letting them down right. in that this con this contract does not work. We gotta we gotta change this contract, and and of course you you want to use your own words and don't use contract because that sounds like marriage contract or something like that. But just say like, man, I am not who I want to be, and I I'm not who I want to be for you, and I'm not who I want to be for me for our kids. Um, I'm not able to bring the best out of you when I'm this way. You know, something something. I mean, just think on it yourself. Don't don't worry about what I'm saying as far as ex exact things, but think on it yourself. Right, yeah, and just, okay, so yeah, just write down and be like crazy, honest, ridiculous. Don't blame yourself too hard. Don't blame her too hard. Recognize, you know, at the time you did the best you can with what you had, all that stuff. But remember, you can never step in the same river twice because you change and so does the river. So to apply it to you, you've never met your wife. Someone else who's a lot like you, what's that? Okay, so someone else who, who is a lot like you met someone who's a lot like her in the past, which is gone. So the next time you see her, I mean, everything can change. Again, don't jump in the direction of, man, I'm going to make everything change. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. That's intensity. We need consistency. So, like, be realistic and say, like, okay, I recognize this. Oh, you know, kind of make notes of, you know, this stuff doesn't work. I don't like this aspect of our day-to-day -day routine. Whatever it is, you got to go with the consistency and the humility and bring her in on it. I mean, if it really is a, a you and her thing, if it's a if it's just a you thing, and keep it amongst yourself and you ask for herself, ask for her help as you as you might. But um, definitely include her before thinking too far into it, or else you're going to, however unmeaning, you're going to just dump a bunch of stuff on her, and she's going to think you've been plotting and, and planning and scheming all up in your head. As crazy right. as uh, Mexican fireworks go off. Y'all got fireworks going off? Yeah, they're tormenting the dogs. I wish they wouldn't. <laughs> but is there anything else? Because um, yeah, this man. video, this video is pretty long. It's thirty-seven minutes. I mean, we 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 can we can talk for forever if you want to. But um, unless there's like other specific stuff or, or any anything you were wondering or wanted mm -hmm. to say. I think it's good enough. I mean, this is really just, I'm, I'm going to put it up on the, the regular channel, but this is just for you to look back at as a frame of reference and, and you argue with it all you want or make up your own video, um, or just, even if it's just to yourself. But the, the way I came across making the videos I, I've made, and you said that I make videos that people don't think to make topics, you know, on the topics people don't think to make, I just think of a concept that's important to me and just say the most honest stuff. And you'll often find the most honest stuff isn't necessarily the strongest line or the most embarrassing line or the thing that is going to shock people. You just know, what do I really think? When somebody will say, like, uh, I mentioned in the other video, and I think maybe you're one of the people who commented about it, that, that I've talked to a lot of people. I've, I've talked to a lot of people out of suicide and homicide. One of the first things you do is you start giving them options. When I meet somebody or if, I, if somebody calls me over and I'm dealing with somebody who's suicidal, for example, I let them know this is a miserable ass world and you are welcome to kill yourself if you want to. So right away, I'm, and, and as a technique, that allows them to feel like I'm not going to try and pressure them out of da, 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 da. So it's a useful technique, but really I mean it too. So it helps to be genuine. But then I tell them, and this is one of the most useful things to tell somebody if you don't want them to kill themselves, but it's also one of the kindest things you can say, all right, but, but you still want to give them other options. You tell them, okay, there are other options. I mean, and even for example, the first options you can give them, okay, how do you want to do it? There's a lot of ways to kill yourself. Then they feel a little more right. empowered, like, okay, then you know, I have these choices. And, I, and then you say, okay, now when do you want to do it? They're like, well, I guess you know, as soon as possible. I'm like, okay, so then what do you got to do? Eventually, they they start having so many options that they feel a lot different than when they started with the problem. And they have all the options in the world. And so when I sit and I talk on a topic, I'm not necessarily going to say something that's even interesting. This video here is 40 minutes of stuff that's probably not going to be interesting to very many people, except the little pieces. And you know how I do my videos, long as hell. I don't clip these things out, almost never. But it's the most honest stuff. And just like dealing with a suicidal or a homicidal person, 
typically they just never deal with honesty. If you sit down to make a video that's far more important to you about your views on this, because this has been mostly me talking, if you start talking, you could say the most important things that have ever been said. All it takes is to sit down, have an idea, and bam, put it out clearly. And it's that's right. It's it's that simple. Um, I think you saw two of my videos, man. Or one of my videos. I only made one. I made two. One of them was stupid, but the other one was me talking about my uncle that died. No, on no, you took it down. You, you, you told me to go to it, and I went to it, and, and I, and I had it set up since it was important. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it another time when I got more time to sit and focus. And then you had taken it down. So I'll, I'll look at it, see if I got it back up. I, I thought I put it back up, but um, I, I might have made a mistake and it didn't back up. But I think it is. Mm. But um, the only thing, I, you know, about the last part we were talking about about women is that. I know this, man. It's been the most difficult thing in my life is, is, is been dealing with women, and I know I'm not alone. I'm, and it, I know it goes both ways. Women will say the same thing, you know, about dealing with men. And to but, be, uh, and to give I'm, you one more piece before you continue, gay men will say the same thing too, and so will gay women. So you think you have it bad with women who are are crazy, disrespectful, da da da. Gay people don't have it all that great. Despite what television would tell us, it's not just a bunch of people that love each other and have a happy time. There's so much jealousy and ridiculousness in the gay community. So much um, violence. But just generally speaking, in trying to have a relationship with another person. Yeah. Close relationship. Yeah. So just so you know, it's the, the grass isn't greener anywhere. We have a mess of a culture. This is my pep talk to you. <laughs> all right, I got you, man. Everyone's miserable, yeah. so buck up. All right. All right, man. Well, uh, that was a good one, man. I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, I mean, we can do another one another time or, or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, well, and, and just keep in mind, just write down whatever and, and feel free to make your own video. And, and you can even make a video. And, um, and when you make a point, just stop for a little second. And I'll make a video and I'll edit them together so it's a conversation. All right. Or we can talk like this. I mean, either way is fine. But don't, but don't think you gotta contact me before you start it. You can, you feel, feel free to make something. You can make the the, the stop very short, just so I know it's a, a it's, give me some time just to edit the video together. But don't stop, you know, like a full length of the of the of the um, response. But we can do something like that, a back and forth that way. Or um, feel free to keep. Uh, we we we're gonna keep contact on Facebook and just. Um, Drop me lines on there about ideas for videos and whatnot too. But however it is that see, this is how I I get by. You know my situation with my kids and whatnot. I like to make videos. You know I talk to you on Facebook and I was like, well let's make a video out of it. And so in the drop of a hat, we're talking about consistency over intensity. Patience is the foundation of stoicism. Powerlifting and surfing. Uh, so this is what I like to do. But if this isn't what you like to do, then do it in the way you like to. It seems like you might like it since you've been faking this strong yeah. silent thing it might be a nice change of pace so yeah it is uh i, I just uh i don't know man you, you're funny dude to me man I, the way you come up with some of these topics and stuff it, it, it's entertaining in a way but it's uh but it also it hits on uh things that, that that make me think of uh stuff you know i do want to talk about so mm. i'll try to put something up man and uh yeah respond to my stuff or or um or, or even the stuff we've been talking about, while it's fresh in your head, make a video about this stuff. Make, I mean, not even like saying anything to me at all. Just like talk about your take on stoicism. Talk about your take on being strong and silent. You can reference this conversation if you want, but you don't need to whatsoever. Um, right off the bat, you'll have a good five or six minute video, maybe ten minute video, saying stuff that you might have never thought before. And what I recommend also is... Man, you gotta... Hmm? You gotta have a shit ton of people you're talking to, man. With all those videos you make, I mean, don't you have a lot of people? Um, I don't know. Maybe even send you video responses and stuff too. I mean, I don't see how you can talk to all these people. <laughs> I can't talk. Many videos do you do? Well, I can't talk to everybody who who. Uh tries to contact me in general, but I, so far I can talk to the people who contact me with with um, just about everyone who contacts me with some some substance. But a lot of people, um, a lot of people just do that. Man, you're awesome, or man, you're not awesome. 
type thing. Yeah, and yeah. so there's nothing really I can say to that. If they give me something to go on, and usually I like the criticism because then I can think about it and usually drop it yeah, because yeah. the criticism is is nowhere to, where it doesn't address enough. But but I like to, to get criticism. That's actually what I was going to mention to you is, is that, well, for one thing, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not bogged down with conversation. That's the nice thing about uh, all this text-based communication is you can just set it aside. Um, but um, I recommend if if you've ever had a difference of opinion with me on a video, then do a response to that video. Or just in general, if there's anything where we disagree, focus on that to ca kind of distance yourself from the idea that we need to agree or that or that you right, and I right. are, huh? I, I, picked up, uh, I picked up on that on your videos and stuff that you're not, it's not like you're trying to, uh, uh, you're trying to, um, you know, you're trying to have dialogue going on, I guess. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to have, uh, you know, like, when, like, like for instance, when you say when somebody says, you know, yeah, I really like your video, cool. I notice you don't respond to that as much as you do when somebody, you know, says something that you can, you know, expound upon or talk more about, or, yeah. you know, yeah. and, 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 and so said another way, what you just said, I'm not interested in being the leader of a cult and I'm not interested in going back and forth and just bickering with somebody who just wants attention as far as, as far as just right. tell, telling me I hate women or that I hate homosexuals or anything like this. The thing that I think I would be useful for and the thing that I look towards is helping other people be able to do their thing. That's what I've done for fitness and for massage. I teach people how to do their own thing about it. So it's better, uh, a better relationship for us than me telling you how you ought to be with women or how you ought to view stoicism is you take a look at the videos and, and like the ones you like, but really go in on, on some topic that I address where you're like, no, nah, that doesn't make sense at all. Da, 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 da. And, and, uh, and make that separation so that you can recognize we don't have to get along to still be acquaintances right. and and um, and to get along. We don't have to agree whatsoever. We can we can be way. I mean, on yeah, because you're you're a Christian, aren't you? Well, I mean, um, I got a lot of deep. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain to me. For me, things like that are not easy answers. You know. Like okay. Well then. Okay. Well, I was about to say we just have. I identify myself. I don't want to identify myself with any denomination of Christianity, but, you know, because it, 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 for, for me, like, say, for instance, on that, if I identify myself as a Baptist or any other uh, denomination, that means I had to follow their doctrine. Mm -hmm. Well, I read all their doctrine, and I don't agree with any of their doctrine 100%. So for me, I couldn't, you see what I'm saying? I couldn't I get you. myself like, I couldn't force myself to fall under something like that. Yeah, I was just trying to think of an example of, of where you and I st strongly disagree. And, and, right, right. So I guess we would disagree that, uh, you know, I would say that since you can't follow that, you should just dump it all together. And then you would say, well, no, I still have un underlying faith. And I would say, well, Jesus said he came to, to uh, fulfill the laws of the prophet, including those evil people like Moses and Abraham that were doing all kinds of uh, mauling and killing communities and stuff. We got stuff to disagree on. Is all my point is, right. and so, and so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah touch yeah. on those, but uh, actually, now, I said something to you before. I've said something to you before. Uh, you said you were saying something about the Bible. I said to you a few times on a few other things, but I think, I think there was more involved in the uh, comments and stuff. Mm. You didn't even really pay attention to what I said. Somebody else said something all crazy, and you went somewhere else with it. But. I get you. <laughs> That's I, how I go sometimes. I am plugging in this laptop because it's going to die. There. Well, I figure that's so, about that. Man, I kind of don't, I, I really don't mind uh, talking about it. I don't get as, uh, I don't get, uh, some people get so flustered up, especially about, like, religion. You know, the things that people say don't talk about religion, politics, and, yeah. you know, what, what uh, Sex, uh, I, sex probably? Religion, politics, and sex? Yeah, I guess. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I don't, that doesn't sound right. The sex part doesn't sound right. But, yeah, religion and politics. Maybe it's just religion and politics. And women's weight. And women's age. And women's hair color uh, and women's makeup. Stuff you shouldn't talk about. That's right, yeah, probably women's weight. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, I'm good on that, though. So, yeah. All right. Um, 
Okay, well, we, we can close it at 50 minutes then, and, and all will be right with the world, and I'll put it up ASAP, which means eventually. All right, man. You added in all that rest that we were just talking about? Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's been running. I'm, I just I just started right. it running. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just tossing it up there. I don't want to edit this thing, man. When I cut a video, like this video is 15 minutes long. If I were to cut this thing in my video editor, the laptop that I use would take at least two hours to render the video, make it another video with like pieces chopped up, and then it would take forever to upload. As it is now, I'm just going to toss this thing all, I'm going to put a title on it and then toss it up. That's it. Right, right. All right, man, I'll look forward to watching it again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then I will see you in uh, in the, uh, whatever they call the internet. Yeah, see you on the internet. <laughs>